What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Life of Mike. Today, hopefully, we finish this 2005 CBR 600 RR build. We'll do a full uh, oil change. We're going to bleed the brakes. Uh, you can see we still got to get the mid fairing and the lower fairing panels on. Um, I've got pretty much everything I need. I went to a few different stores today. So let's do this. I'm ready to hear this thing run. I'm ready to ride this thing maybe around the neighborhood. Um, I don't plan on registering it for myself. It is going to be for sale after this video is over. So uh, first thing I need to do, I wanna put some gas in the, in the bike to let the bike heat up, run for a little bit, and then we'll drain the oil and start the oil change. So let's get right into it and uh, let's go ahead and get the bike started. All right, now that I got some gas in the tank, let's go ahead and get it started up. I'm gonna get up the temperature. Real quick. All right, so once it's up to temperature, we'll go ahead and kill it and uh, drain the oil. Right now it's pretty cold, I haven't run it in a while. Not even registering a temperature yet, so we'll give it a little bit of time. I just cut the motor off, so um, first thing we got to do is pop open the uh, the drain plug there, and I broke it loose. I was kind of nervous with it being all rusty, but um, it's actually broken loose right now. I'm going to also probably remove remove this out of the way, the uh, uh, overflow reservoir for the, uh, the radiator, because uh, you can see the oil filters right here, and now that the exhaust is nice and hot, I really don't want to burn my hand. So I'll just kind of move this thing out of the way for the time being. But aside from that, I'll probably put a little bit of aluminum foil down there to keep from getting oil on the exhaust pipes. But yeah, this is just gonna be another routine oil change to help the flow a little bit. Go ahead and loosen the uh, oil cap here to let it flow a little bit better. So got that out. So I had no issues getting off the old oil filter. As you can see, I wrapped the exhaust in aluminum foil so that when you drain the oil from the oil filter, it doesn't get all over your exhaust pipes and stink like hell when you uh, start the bike after your oil change. So it looks like the oil plug is still dripping a little bit and so is the oil filter area so we'll let it uh, continue to drain for a little while longer i've got the bike tilted forward i'm trying to drain this thing completely dry um, as you can see from the oil um, it's pretty dark so i wouldn't be surprised if this is the original oil from 2005. Um, this thing only has it's got less than 8,000 miles on it so um, I've seen a lot of original equipment. I believe this is an original factory oil filter as well. So this all supports the mileage being accurate. Um, it will be an actual mileage title. So um, good and bad. The good is that everything's original. The bad is I don't think they ever changed anything or did any maintenance on it. So um, I'm trying to get all that set up for the next owner. So this thing's uh, in tip top shape and ready to go. I like to put out a good product for whoever's gonna have this bike next especially if they see their bike on the channel. So anyways, let's go ahead and finish draining the oil and then we'll get the new oil filter installed and some new oil in the bike. So while we're waiting for the engine to completely drain, I wanted to show you that I got the OEM nut that goes on the other side of this engine mount here. Don't want y'all to think I forgot about that. So we'll be installing that today as well. And uh, that's got, that means that we have all of the engine mounts back in place. Um, I pulled off the frame sliders that the uh, previous owner had on here and we're just taking this thing back to stock. So um, I got one of those and given that the drain plug for this bike was so rusty, you can see it right here, I went ahead and ordered a brand new OEM drain plug and a brand new washer as well. So whoever the new owner is will be set for future oil changes and again this is all genuine uh, Honda products here. So. Um, it looks like we're just about done. A few little drips left. Uh, a few more minutes here and this oil change will be complete. 
So you might notice it's gotten a little bit darker outside and that's because I bought the wrong oil filter at AutoZone. I made the mistake of trusting the person behind the counter. I went ahead and actually looked up the size for this and it is a K&N 204-1. So lesson learned, just go search for the part number before going. Really can't trust the people behind the counter. It's the second time this has happened. The last time I purchased an oil filter from AutoZone for the RC51, they also sold me the wrong filter. So anyways, now that I've got the right filter, let's go ahead and finish up this oil change. All right, so after filling it to the middle of the fill line, letting it run for a minute, and then checking the, uh, the oil level after letting it run, I added a little bit more oil. It turned out to be exactly uh, three quarts on the dot, which is pretty uh, on par with what I was reading online. Still have an extra quart left over. I'll probably keep that just for future projects, but got the oil change uh, completed. So now I've got some company coming over here and just a little bit. So I think the last thing I'll probably do today is put on that uh, engine mount uh, nut in the back there. And who knows, maybe I'll take this thing around the neighborhood for a quick spin. Okay, so I've got the front right engine hanger nut all torqued down to spec. We got our pinch bolt tightened down. Uh, the last thing I have to do before throwing the fairings on is the uh, adding the brake fluid and bleeding the brakes for bro both the front and the rear. And unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to do that tonight since I do have some company coming over. So let's go ahead and fast forward to tomorrow and we should be able to wrap this thing up. Good morning guys and welcome back to another day. So as you can see, I've got the bike stored away from last night. So we got the oil change done and we added some fuel and that's about it. So today I wanna get the uh, brake fluid uh, taken care of. I wanna bleed the brakes, uh, fill the brake fluid up and uh, this thing's gonna be pretty much ready to go back together completely. We'll get the rest of the fairings on. Hopefully I have all the right uh, nuts and bolts to put the thing back together. And this project's officially done. So uh, let's go ahead and pull the bikes out and get everything ready to work. Okay, now that we've got the bike up on stands, uh, first thing I'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and move my way up here to the front. I'm going to pop off this little cover here and I'm gonna grab my uh, brake bleeding set. So uh, we'll go ahead and loosen this up. Um, of course, open up the reservoir up here. Uh, we'll use this as a pump to pump the, uh, I guess the residual air and fluid out of the system and get some new fluid added through the top of the reservoir here. So we'll do that for the front and for the rear. And then we can start finishing up our duct work from here to here and putting on the remaining plastics. I just finished bleeding the front and rear brakes and that is never fun and I don't claim to be an expert at it but um, you can see we got some nice fresh new fluid here in the rear as well as the front you can see if we tilt it here nice and clean got a nice pull on the front and nice pressure on the rear so we are good to go there and while I was doing the rear brakes I noticed that I'm missing a couple of the little nylon uh, pop rivets here. So thankfully I do have a couple extra of those that I purchased the other day from uh, one of our local uh, power, power sports centers. So I will be installing these in those spots. And uh, I think the next thing on our list is to run the duct work and then we'll put on the rest of these fairings.
All right, thank you again to Partzilla for the OEM uh, replacement duct work that I've got here. Got new seals, got a new right duct, and I've tidied up the wiring. I had the original uh, OEM cover here for these connectors, and these connectors snap right into the side of this, uh, this duct here. It's kind of hard to see, but there are a couple pins that just pop right in, and this section is now good to go. So. Uh, we are officially ready to put on the mid and lower fairings as well as the uh, duct covers. So that is the last step we have here before wrapping up the entire build. It's really starting to come together now. So um, you can see that uh, this is gonna tighten down here. The fit is not too bad. A Little bit of gapping here, but no big deal. Uh, same with over on this side. Let's see if I can get you a better close up view here. That gap will close. Might have a little bit of a gap here, but no big deal. Pretty nice tight seam here to the gas tank. The graphics seem to align pretty well on that side. They align pretty well on that side as well. So now let's go ahead and get the mid fairings on both the left and the right hand side. Okay, so I officially have the right side of the bike completed, all the fairings mounted, and I think it looks awesome, honestly. For a, uh, an aftermarket kit, this thing came out great, and uh, you can see that I've got the heat shield in there. Uh, I went ahead and did a layer of aluminum tape plus the heat shield, um, you know, just for some added protection there, and uh, I'll be doing the same thing over on uh, the left side as well. So let's go ahead and shift over all of our equipment and tools, and we'll go ahead and do the, the same thing on the left side. And look who decided to show up at the end of the build. Hey. Hey. And <laughs> good timing. <laughs> what do you think? First reaction. Nice. 
It looks amazing. Dave always happens to show up at the beginning and the end of the build. Don't mind the pile of spare parts. <laughs> now, one of the last things that we need to do to finish this project up is I would like to replace the stickers here as well as the, uh, the little snap rings. This one is really rusted out. I think, you know, looking down at the dash, you see that and it just implies that this thing is old and not taken care of. So I want to show that we are taking care of things and we'll get that swapped out. Um, there are a couple other little uh, plastic rivet holes that I have. I don't have a fastener in. I'm not sure if it's lined up perfectly or not, but something I noticed with this particular kit, um, for anyone looking at the NT fairing kit for this bike, you'll notice that it rubs ever so slightly in that area right there. You can see it's already starting to mar it up a little bit. So um, that might just be some bad shimming on my part, but I haven't done any shimming over on this side. So um, everything pretty much fit together pretty well over here. Um, so I don't know that there's really much more I could have done. Uh, possibly if I put the uh, little plastic rivet, it will pull it in a little bit, but um, you're not really gonna be turning the handlebars that way very often. So don't think it's a huge deal. Uh, you don't have rubbing on this side, kind of hard to see there, but it has clearance. So we're good there. Um, as far as any other plastic rivets that I'm missing, uh, there's one here and one here as well. So I'll see if I can get those in there without too much trouble today. Uh, we'll do the snap rings and the stickers and this project is complete. All right, that was nice and easy. I removed the snap ring as well as the adjuster. And you can see this side's a little bit rusty. This side's not so bad. Um, so I'm just gonna clean this up real quick and then we will remove the factory stickers here. You can see this is the rusted side. Um, this side's not so bad, but it's still a little bit torn up. I actually scratched the sticker up there when I was removing it. But um, like I said, we're replacing these stickers anyway, so it looks brand new and I do have those over in that box right there. So let's go ahead and clean up uh, the rust off of the forks themselves, and then we'll get these stickers changed out. All right, and there you have it. Got a little bit of an air bubble right there. I think when this thing sits out in the sun, it should probably uh, gas out, so not too worried about that. But overall, that looks way better than what was there before, so really happy about that. Okay, so we've got the new stickers installed for the fork adjusters, and man, that looks way better than what we had before. Really happy with how that came out. I think the new owner is gonna appreciate that. Now, for the part that I missed, I gotta take the mirrors off, as well as this fastener here for the windscreen off. Um, same on the opposite side, and we'll go ahead and get that fairing stay added in here. Um, I wanna have this thing as OEM as possible, and I paid for the part, so I might as well install it for the new owner. So let's do it. Now, before we jump straight into the montage, we're gonna go ahead and clean this thing up real quick. Uh, just get it shined up real nice. We'll do a, a quick montage, a little before and after circle around the bike. And then after that's done, uh, I wanna take it out for a ride, uh, really just around the neighborhood, because as you can see, um, I don't have a plate on here, so I don't wanna take it on to any uh, public roadways, but uh, maybe I'll throw the uh, GoPro on real quick and we'll take it around the neighborhood. But let's go ahead and get this thing cleaned up and uh, then we'll do the, uh, the montage. and that wraps up another build series. This was a 2005 Honda CBR 600 RR. This thing was totally destroyed when we brought it home. It had no left clip on, the rear rim was bent, the front forks were all rusted and pitted out. Um, it had practically no body panels, so we brought this thing back to life. I'm really happy that this is now gonna be back on the road and back in circulation. 
That's what it's all about here at Life of Mike. We're trying to take bikes that have been neglected or just not cared for and we want to put them back on the street. So really happy with how this bike came out. Whoever the new owner is, I hope you appreciate this build series. We did everything possible to make this thing perfect for you. And uh, I'm really excited that you get to uh, have it and enjoy it. So thanks for checking out the channel. I hope you enjoyed the build series and stay tuned for more episodes.